we gather in this place to feast on the goodness of God and to drink from the cup of mercy.
see everybody that makes it a little bit longer for the share of the piece, don't All right, please share the prayer of illumination with me. Almighty God, as we read these words of scripture, open our eyes to your transforming love so that we get up and dance to your joyous song. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is from Acts 9, verses 36 through 43. You can follow along on page 894 in here. Bible. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works. So for this morning's time with young disciples, I want to talk about how animals get around. So, um, what, what's your favorite animal? Dog, of course it's a dog, because um, we're dog people, I love it. So dogs have four legs and they can walk around pretty well, um, for the most part, right? And they can hop, have you ever seen dogs, like little dogs kind of jump, do little bouncy jumps? Sometimes the dogs can jump up real high. What are some of our other favorite animals? I was thinking about chickens. Chickens can run on their two little legs. Um, and sometimes they like flutter, they like kind of fly, and then, but they don't go anywhere. They don't go up as high, right? But they kind of like, they hop by flying a couple feet. And then we have other animals, you know, robins and all those other birds that fly as a means of getting around. There are snakes, because I was thinking Jace would be here, and he loves snakes, right? Snakes, they slither, they don't have legs, but they still manage to get where they need to go. So today we're going to read a story about a woman whose name meant gazelle. Now a gazelle is an animal that's kind of like a deer, right? So when you think of deer, a lot of times you just see them kind of like walking around when they're off in the woods somewhere, right? Sometimes they run, but sometimes they also do this weird like jumpy hop. I don't know if you've seen that, where they are running and then all of a sudden like their four legs go out and they come back. And it kind of looks like a bunny hop sometimes because they jump up and back and up and back. But what's amazing about gazelles when they do this is that it's so pretty. It's so beautiful how they can kind of just, it looks like they're dancing, like ballerinas that beautifully jump in the air. I'm glad the pulpit's here to hide what's happening. <laughs> um, but there is, it's so amazing to me to think about how God created all of these creatures in the world. And we all have different ways to get around. So people, we can walk and we can run, but we can also like ride in cars, airplanes. But dogs and snakes and chickens, they all have different ways of kind of moving throughout the world. And gazelles or deer. We all kind of get from one point to another in a different way. And that is better or worse than another. It's just kind of how we're created, but also how all of those can be seen as a dance. <coughs> you get Eddie doesn't do it very often, but you can get him up on his hind legs and he can turn around like he's dancing. And when they, you know, are majestically flying through the air and jumping and leaping, it's kind of like dancing. When the chickens kind of flutter up. And God made us all so that we can dance in our own little way. And sometimes it's me behind the pulpit dancing. But we all have our way of dancing and how great a gift that is for each of us to have. So let us close our time together in prayer. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for all of the critters that we see, for the ways that they dance. Help us to dance as well. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. So the past few weeks, we've been reading through the book of Acts. 
and we've discovered some of the unsung heroes of the early apostles. These people who are following God's call to do things out of the ordinary. Philip got up and chased a chariot down so that he could have this encounter with an Ethiopian eunuch. Last week, Saul was converted. God asked Ananias to go and visit this man who was trying to kill him and his friends and tell him the good news of Jesus. These are ordinary people doing kind of extraordinary things. And this week, we have a disciple of Jesus, a woman who is both remarkable and kind of ordinary. Tabitha is a woman of great importance to those that knew her and now to us. First, any time a woman is given a name, it's a status symbol, especially in the Bible. Many people, especially women that are encountered throughout scripture, will go without being named. But we not only know one name for this woman, but we know both names. This means that she was so well known by the author Luke, who believed that others would know who she was by writing both of these names, which is why he needed to put both Tabitha and Dorcas as names for people would know who he was talking about. So she was someone in this early Christian community that people would have known by name. Now, Tabitha is also called Dorcas, which is a Greek name. And that tells us that she is both Jewish but also kind of is in the Greek world and works with a lot of Greek citizens in whatever way that may be. So she kind of bridges this gap between these two cultures where she is in both cultures, which is why she has both an Aramaic name and a Greek name. Now, even though Tabitha and Dorcas sound nothing alike, Right? You're like, how, are, how is that the same person? Tabitha and Dorcas? It's not Kathleen and Katie, where you can kind of see where that makes sense. But what the commonality is, is that both Tabitha and Dorcas mean gazelle. In Aramaic, Tabitha means gazelle. In Greek, Dorcas means gazelle. So this deer-like creature, who also is full of grace, was seen as a very graceful animal because of this leaping that they were able to do. And they're also very fast runners. Gazelles sometimes in the wild can outrun their competitors because they're, so, they're such sprinters, or they're <clears throat> those who are trying to come after them. So the meaning of this name, gazelle, becomes important later on in the story. Because Tabitha is a disciple, and this is very critical. She is the only woman in the entire Bible who is called a disciple. Mary Martha, Mary Magdalene, the other women who followed Jesus around, who were with the disciples, they themselves were never called disciples. They were present while all of these things were happening, but it is Tabitha who receives this title. She's a female disciple. The word here in the Greek is feminine and is only used just this once to describe Tabitha. Not only does this demonstrate that women were in fact disciples and leaders of the early church, but it also gives us a glimpse into what she meant to this community, that Tabitha was well known and an important member of these early apostles that were moving throughout the area at this time. Now she was described as being devoted to good works and acts of charity. This is the definition of a disciple, full of good works and giving. Acts of charity means that she was compassionate and spent her time 
and talent on others instead of on herself. In many other healing and resurrection stories, we learn about how devout a person is, how strong their faith is, for that is what makes them well. But Tabitha's faith and her devotion to Christ, we don't know much about. We don't know if she met Jesus while he was alive or not. We just know that she is now a disciple who's doing good things in her community and being generous. We also know that because of who was mourning her death, we can kind of put together the type of work that she was doing. So she was surrounded by widows who called her Dorcas, who were showing off her garments that she had made once she passed. From this, we assume that she was making these garments clothing for the Greek widows in the area. Culturally, widows were the poorest of the poor, the most destitute in society, without family support, and in the most need of help. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, the children of Israel are charged with caring for the orphans and the widows. While we don't know much about her faith, it's clearly evident in her faithfulness in caring for those in need. This act of charity, clothing widows, was much more than providing what was a basic need. We all know the importance of a good outfit, how we can put on our favorite shirt or dress, and it can change our entire mood for the day. We know something that isn't comfortable to wear, something we don't like, also is probably going to make us a little grumpy. So a widow who had nothing, a new tunic, a new garment, could have been a game changer. It would have not only given her dignity that she was then feeling like a person again, but it would have empowered others to treat her as if she were one of them and not this outcast, outlier, poor person in need of help. Instead of looking at on a woman in pity, they would have just seen a woman in a tunic instead of noticing right away her social status. A simple garment, giving people dignity, lifting up the lowly, just as Christ himself did. So when Tabitha died, it was a huge hit to her community. She was a staple, and after a brief illness, she passed. Now Peter and the apostles were nearby to, though, to where Tabitha was, and those who were with her sent to get Peter, asking him to come quickly. We can kind of guess that Peter might have known Tabitha or at least known of her. And he would have wanted to come to mourn her death. But when they told Peter to come, they didn't say why. They just told him that he was needed at this moment. Maybe those who went to get Peter were hoping that Peter could heal Tabitha. They were praying for a miracle. Or maybe those who were distraught by Tabitha's death needed Peter to be there to comfort them and to maybe be their pastor. So we don't know why they asked Peter to come and why it needed to happen now. But her death would have had such a big impact on the community that word of her death would have spread very quickly. So once Peter arrives, the widows are kind of showing off these beautiful garments that she made, probably telling stories of her generosity. And they were probably wondering what would happen next. 
Who would take her place? What would happen to her ministry? These are questions we all face when someone dies. Even when we're able to prepare for someone's death, we're left with a lot of questions on what to do next. What happens with the things, the life, the legacy? Peter is aware of this loss in the community and how much it will impact everyone. And so when he arrives, he asks to be alone with Tabitha. Now throughout the ministry of both Jesus and the disciples, they followed after him. They always performed miracles and signs and wonders in public. For everyone to see, that way they would believe in the sign and the miracle. So it's unusual that this healing happened behind closed doors, but that's what Peter does. He prays by her bedside and tells her to get up, open her eyes, and she sees Peter, and then she sits up. Tabitha, Dorcas, the gazelle, springs back into life. Now the scripture says that she took Peter's hand and he helped her up. But I'm still stuck on this image of the gazelle kind of leaping around. She was just brought back to life with all the grace and spring up in her step once again. I imagine her just jumping right up like a gazelle. Those who were with her, the saints and the widows, were called in and they saw her alive once more. Word began to spread of Tabitha's resurrection and of Jesus, who also himself had conquered death. Tabitha was an important vessel for this message. She was a disciple of Christ. She lived her life in service to her community. Her faith empowered her to offer that which she had and put her skills to use for the most vulnerable of society. She was known by both Jews and Greeks, living in both worlds, well known not because she was some hot shot, but because of her generosity, the way that she cared for others. She was a fixture of her community, and her death would have been devastating. Tabitha's resurrection is a significant story about an ordinary woman. She allowed her life and her death to bear witness to Christ's work in the world. Through her story, many came to believe in Jesus as Lord. And she may not seem significant to us. She made clothes, something that many of us ourselves have done, sewn together garments. But that is what makes this story truly remarkable. She did what most of us do, and yet her death rippled through the community, and Peter saw fit to bring her back to life, an ordinary woman following Christ in her day-to-day -day life, experienced the resurrection in ways we could only hope for. We can all be inspired by the simplicity of this story. Tabitha did many good things and was charitable, and she lived her life of faith, following Jesus' message to care for those most in need. In doing so, she lived and died with Christ, and her work continued. Tabitha the gazelle got up from her bed and continued on in her work, living a life of service, helping others. 
not for a benefit or reward, but out of her faith, out of her devotion to Jesus and his message. So as we sit and think about this ordinary woman who becomes extraordinarily healed, think about the ways in which we move throughout our world in small yet ordinary ways, doing what is supposed to be done, caring for others, helping those most in need. Let us rise up and spring into action with a little pep in our step, knowing that Christ has conquered death and offered us all a new start. Dancing in the way that God has called us to dance, leading us to this life where even the simplest generosities can transform the world. Let us trust in the resurrection that God can make us all dance and spring up into the new life given to us in Christ. May God bless our understanding of these words from Holy Scripture. Amen.
not just for our own sake, but for your sake. Compelled by your gospel message, the resurrection of the dead, knowing that new life is always before us. God, we pray for our world, for the places that are torn in violence and despair, for governments under attack. God, we pray for your leadership, not just here in our country, but around the world, that you will guide.